What is the Federal Student Aid Program? How can it help college-bound seniors and their parents? What is the FAFSA and how do I fill it out? We'll address these questions and more coming up in this edition of The Chat Room. Welcome to The Chat Room. I'm your host, Frank O'Gara, and joining me today is Ms. Michelle Drawn from the Office of Federal Student Aid, the United States Department of Education. Ms. Drawn has a broad knowledge of the federal student aid programs and the federal aid application process. She works on the FAFSA completion project and other outreach activities for military families. Welcome to The Chat Room, Michelle. Thank you, Frank. Well, we're really happy to have you here today, and that we have a great topic today of financial aid, because for a lot of our seniors, and we've got more than 3,000 seniors around the globe in about 49 different high schools, have just finished largely the application process that they've had, their college applications are in, and of course they're gonna wait for those anxious moments that come when they get the letters in the, in the mail in April. But there's an important step that has to happen now for students and parents, and that's the whole financial aid process. So I want to begin by asking you, what is it that our college-bound college students and their parents um, can do to find information about federal aid? We have a wonderful website, and it's called studentaid.gov. And on that website, there are key areas, such as preparing for college, the types of aid, who will get aid, FAFSA, applying for aid, which we'll talk about in a little bit, and repaying your student loans. So if we could start with, what does a senior need to be doing right now? Yeah, absolutely. That's the $10,000 question they're all asking right now. So we'll start with clicking on prepare for college. And from there, the drop-down menu will show us a checklist. And we'll click on the 12th grade checklist and what we want the seniors to begin doing now is, if they haven't filled out those applications for college, to go ahead and complete those applications. As well as the next step is, how am I going to pay for college? And the big application that everyone talks about is the FAFSA. So we're going to talk about that. And the nice thing about the checklist is it also includes information about what the parents need to be doing during this process because it is a family process to get that student ready to college. And, and I think that's a really important point for our, for our families to understand that, you know, even though your son or daughter may have finished with the, the application process, that parents really need to be with them side by side as they begin this financial aid process. Is that, is that a fair statement? That is correct because the, the FAFSA requires some information from the parent as well as the student on the application. Now, we, you said we're going to talk about FAFSA in a minute, but you were also, um, you wanted to share, I think, think, some information about the types of financial aid that are out there. That's correct. There are three main types of financial aid. There are grants and scholarships, which are funds that the student does not have to repay. And then there's also the loans, which need to be repaid upon completion of college. And then work study, which allows the student to gain valuable work experience either on campus or off campus and be paid for that experience. Now, you know, some of our parents may, um, and maybe from past experience or from the stories they've heard from other people may think, well, I, I make too much money. I, I, I mean, I'm not even going to bother with this process because it's not worth it. We're not going to get any help. Um, what do you say to those parents? I would say complete the FAFSA because there may not be grants that the student would be able to get, but there are other types of financial aid that the student might be eligible for. And the work study is an important one for them as well. It is. It provides them an opportunity to either work on campus or work for a nonprofit organization that is um, an approved organization for the program. What about scholarships? Scholarships. If you go to the website and go to types of aid that I mentioned, and on the right-hand side there is a scholarship search. Additionally, on that page there is also a PDF version that shows scholarships particularly for military families. Oh, great. And there are a lot of them out there. There are. Um, there's a complete list there. And don't forget your service-connected organizations they may have scholarship funds as well. And they may not actually show up in the search. Correct. Yeah. So it, it is um, some legwork for the student to go out and talk to everyone that they do business with, whether it's the grocery store or the cell phone company or 
um, maybe a vendor and ask them if there are scholarship funds. And in our military communities um, here in the states and overseas, I mean, our counselors are working with um, communities and they're advertising those locally available scholarships um, to students. And they're a great source of, um, of income for parents um, when they're trying to pay the bills. So um, I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, FAFSA, okay, what, what, what does the acronym stand for? What's it all about? Talk to us about that. The acronym stands for Free Application for, fin for Student Aid. See, it's, it's hard to remember. It is hard to remember. <laughs> um, and the important thing is that the application opens every year, January 1st. So there are a few things that you need to do before you complete your application, such as how do I sign it? Do I do this electronically? Um, I know of some parents have students that might have done it in the days when we did paper. We have made the process a lot easier now by being able to do it online. And the average application takes 23 minutes to complete online. Well, that's great because I know as a parent, okay, and as a former principal that, you know, um, a, a few years back, okay, it was a, a much lengthier process, okay. What's the first step when they're, when they're um, ready to start thinking about the FAFSA, a student and a parent? What do they need to do? The first step would be to get a PIN. And we like to, to use the analogy of the PIN is like an ATM card. And so you want to... Go online, again, to studentaid.gov, and click on Apply for FAFSA. And within that section of the page, there will be a link to How Do I Get a PIN? And the PIN is instantaneous now. You can either make up your own PIN. That's great. Or the PIN can be um, shown on the screen. So you used to have to wait for snail mail for the PIN, but now they get right. it immediately. Everything is, is electronic now, which is much easier. Now, do parents and students, um, do they, they need to hold on to that PIN? Is that something that they'll need every year as they're, as they're redoing their FAFSA application? Yes, it is. They will do that um, every year as they go through the process. So they'll do a renewal FAFSA for the next year. Which is simpler even than the Which first one. Which is simpler because the information is already pre-populated. Is there something that they should prepare for before they go there. They get the pin instantaneously, but how about the questions that are going to be asked? Is there information that they should gather to complete it? They can actually go to FAFSA, how to apply from studentaid.gov, and there's a list of things. It's the second item there that says gathering the documents you need. And with the application, you don't actually need to physically have your tax return anymore. You can import that information from the IRS. And because we know the, ted the deadline for filing your taxes is until April, you can estimate. Well, that's great. Right now. And then when you do file that return, you would go in and update your FAFSA application. So if there are changes um, to, the um, to the information that they originally put in, they ought to go in and initiate a change later on. Correct. And they can do that all electronically. Okay. Um, now. So, so I'm a parent, okay, and, um, and I have a senior, and together we, we get the PIN, we fill out the, uh, the FAFSA application, we meet the deadlines, and you, you mentioned that there's not only the, and the, the program opens the 1st of January, but there are state deadlines, and then they have to check the deadline for the college that they're hoping to get financial aid from as well, correct? That's correct. So I, I finish all that. Um, what, what do I hear back from FAFSA? What, what kind of information? How will I know my application was ex accepted? How will I know if I'm eligible? You'll receive an email from Federal Student Aid stating that your application has been processed. It's called a Student Aid Report. And we'll ask you to look at that report again just to make sure that we did capture the information correctly. So you'll answer that and the information is then sent to the 10 schools that you've listed on your FAFSA, so they'll receive your uh, aid information. Okay, good. So they can list 10 schools on the application, and you automatically, the program automatically sends it to those colleges. That is correct. Great. And then from there, the college admissions people and the financial aid people take a look at it, and then they process uh, an offer to each student for the financial aid that they're going to offer. Correct. Great. Um, Michelle, now, there are, are there other resources that the, the Federal Student Aid Office has that may be helpful to our military students and families all over the world? 
This year we have some wonderful videos that we've placed out on YouTube and that's youtube.com forward slash federal student aid and there's one called um, how to apply and it's actually at a very high level talks about completing the FAFSA. A good recommended video to watch before they actually start the process. Yes, it gives them a little bit of background so they know what they're what they're going to be endeavoring in. Great. Um, Michelle, is there any other um, advice or recommendations that you might have for, for our military students and families as they um, enter this next phase of the, the college-bound process? I would say good luck. It's a wonderful journey to embark on, and Federal Student Aid is here to help you. Well, we appreciate it, and they, the, our families um, welcome any help that they can get with this important topic. Thank you for joining us um, today to talk about it, and uh, we appreciate it. I think there are lots of opportunities for us to collaborate on ways that we can better help our seniors in the future, and we really look forward to that. Wonderful. Thank you very much. For more information on the financial aid process, check uh, the URL on our screen. I'm Frank O'Gara. Thank you for joining us in this edition of The Chat Room.